streets by a bunch of neo-Nazi thugs. It took over a decade for anyone, roughly 15 years or so for anyone, to ever be convicted of that gruesome murder, and it was a violently racist attack. A year before the murder of Stephen Lawrence, I was facing similar racist attacks in Essex, through machetes and hammers and screwdrivers. I watched many of my friends stabbed and attacked. Some of them for defending me. And that, the murder of this one man, rightfully so, the murder of Stephen Lawrence, was a moment, a turning point in this country that led to the McPherson Inquiry, instituted initially by the Labour government, and then the McPherson Report, which coined the phrase institutional racism and shifted the debate in this country around race permanently and forever. I'm going to say to you right now that that was the murder of one man. His mother now sits in the House of Lords. This scandal involving 27 cities with probably thousands of underage young girls. It must lead to a Stephen Lawrence style national inquiry. Looking into what the institutional failures have been. Just as was done with racism, and it was recognised that there were failures up and down the institutions of this country, and eventually it was recognised that the police forces were deemed institutionally racist. Well, here, the majority of these girls were in care homes, and therefore were let down by these care homes. One girl was... She was impregnated twice before the age of 15 in her care home because an adult predator was allowed into their care home to statutorily rape her. Eventually found dead from a heroin overdose. There has been failures on an institutional level in the care homes up and down this country. There have been failures on an institutional level in the police up and down this country. And there have been failures on an institutional level in local labor, labor councils, probably not only labor, but mainly labor councils up and down this country because people have been scared of being called racist. And if the McPherson inquiry led to the coining of the phrase institutional racism in this country, then this grooming gang scandal must be investigated on a national level in the same way, because this is institutional misogyny. And if there's a word for child hatred, that's what this is. And the fear of racism or the fear of so-called Islamophobia, which is a misnomer, the fear, more appropriately, of anti-Muslim bigotry must never be an excuse to allow underage girls to be raped and abused in this way. But it was. Think of that. Imagine that. 27 cities. And counting. Because I can guarantee you we haven't heard the end of this yet. Imagine the thousands of victims. Imagine the impunity with which these men must have been acting. Some of the girls as young as 11. One girl, if my memory serves me correctly, it was in Oxford. One girl was even branded. Branded by her raper as property of and then his name. On her leg. And I think, if memory serves me correct correctly, that girl was 11 years old. It is an absolute disgrace that this has been allowed to go on in this country. And you may hear me being angry right now. If you're not going to be angry about this, what on earth are you going to get angry about? People have cared for their reputations over the safety of children in this country being raped and drugged and passed around like meat because of the bigotry and the prejudice, prejudices of these Pakistani Muslim men who were looking down on these children as less than, as inferior, as some, some form of infidel that doesn't deserve honour or dignity. And I say that because if you want to... And I address you now here, O oh woke left wing. You talk about believing the victim. Look it up. Go to your smartphone and Google Ella Hill. She writes a piece in The Independent in which, and she's a survivor of this form of grooming gang sexual, child sexual exploitation. And she writes a column in which she describes the religious extremist terminology her abusers were using as they were sexually exploiting her as a child. 
in which she talks of how they called her an infidel and how they abused her race and her lack of Islamic faith and justified treating her in this way because they viewed her as less than because they believe themselves to be Muslim supremacists. Don't tell me that their Muslim identity had nothing to do with this. I have lived and breathed this community all of my life. I can guarantee you that it's not the cause, but a factor in the way in which these girls was treated was the culture of these men, and as part of that culture is their religious attitude towards non-Muslims. And that is the reason that you see almost exclusively that they are men like me, Pakistani, British, Muslim. Most of them. Some of them Bangladeshi Muslims. Some of them Indian Muslims. Some of them North African Muslims. Some of them Somali Muslims. All, all of them Muslims. Almost all Pakistani Muslims. And the victims, almost all underaged white girls. Now who will lead, who will defend the voiceless in this national scandal? Who will lead the case for saying we need a national inquiry into how this would have been tolerated for so long in any other crime? And even, yes, the murder of that one man, Stephen Lawrence, which set off, and rightfully so, a huge national debate around institutional racism in this country. In any other case, you first get through the phase of being able to talk about it. Then you get to justice where you convict the perpetrators. Then you start looking at those who covered up for the perpetrators. And that's what the McPherson inquiry did in the case of Stephen Lawrence. And it deemed the police institutionally racist. Well, I ask you now, we've started to convict people. Yes, I listed those 27 cities for you, which is bad enough as it is. But where's the accountability for the police who covered this up? Where's the accountability uh, for the Labour councils who covered this up? Where's the compensation for the victims? Because the police deliberately shelved investigations into their statutory rape because they wanted to be politically correct. Ella Hill and all the other victims deserve compensation. Where are the accolades for Anne Cryer MP, former Labour MP in Keeley, who raised this years and years ago, was a sole voice crying out into the wilderness, beseeching people to listen to her, pleading with people not to deem her racist, that she was a Labour MP. Racism was the furthest thing from her mind. She was ignored. Then came Julie Bindel, the first to write columns about this. Ignored. In fact, she writes herself that in 2007 she was looking into this and her pieces were shelved. Editors didn't want to run her pieces because they feared being accused of being racist. And then, of course, the Times picked it up and Anthony Lloyd, Anthony Lloyd won an award for his award-winning investigation into this, which kicked off the national debate. But look, look how Sarah Champion was treated. Labour front bencher who was sacked because she said this was a problem. And now, finally, the independent police watchdog has said, yes, it was covered up by the police. Well, that's not good enough. We need a statutory inquiry, just like there was done with Stephen Lawrence, a statutory inquiry to investigate what exactly went wrong and how this will avoid, be avoided in the future. Because there have been clear failures in the care system. There have been clear failures in the local councils. And obviously, now they've admitted it, clear failures in the police forces. And also, I would say, let's go further. Don't just convict these men. Look at the communities. Where are the clear failures in the communities themselves? Because nothing short of this national and statutory inquiry will satisfy the victims and bring them dignity and honour back to their lives, if that, but also quell the anger that is, people are rightfully feeling as these cases unfold. As I say, it is a national disgrace. <laughs>